Let's continue our investigation of ski areas in Colorado. Let's go ahead and zoom to Arapaho Basin, where the east wall offers the highest skiable terrain in the state. How can I find Arapaho Basin ski area? I could pan around here and look, uh, but there's an easier way. One of the ways to do that is to go ahead and open up our ski areas by right-clicking on ski areas and opening up the attribute table. And I see all the names of my ski areas here. How many do I have in the data set? Let me shrink this down a bit so I can see uh, the bottom of this box. I have 22, as you can see at the bottom of the screen, 22 records or rows or, uh, in, my, in my table. This is just like an Excel spreadsheet, but it's tied to the map, as you know from the last segment. This is the I part of your GIS. I could sort on the name. And so right at the top there, I see Arapaho Basin. I can go ahead and highlight that. And then way on the left side, I can say, I can zoom to it. Let's go ahead and zoom to it. And then let's get rid of this table for the moment. And uh, let's go ahead and zoom out. So that's Arapaho Basin. And eventually, I'll be able to see the text that I already have built. Uh, that's my label uh, for Arapaho Basin. OK, so there's Arapaho Basin. It's very close to the Continental Divide. How close is it to the Continental Divide? Well, let's go ahead and zoom in with our Zoom In tool. There is a measure tool down here, uh, right here. It looks like an arrow with a uh, question mark and a ruler. That's my measure tool. And I'm going to click on this small drop-down arrow and measure the distance. Let's say I want to measure it in, um, I've got a lot of choices here. Let's go ahead and pick miles. OK, so now with my measure tool, I'm going to pick uh, one end of the Arapaho ski area, and then I'm going to, z and then I'm going to draw it over into until it hits the Continental Divide. And as I can see here, I've, I'm less than a mile from the Continental Divide. Depends on where I measure from, but it's pretty close, isn't it, to the Continental Divide? As opposed to this ski area over here. Uh, keystone, which we were looking at earlier. Let's just take the closest piece of Keystone to the Continental Divide and measure over to the closest part of the Continental Divide that we can see here, and that we're just under four miles to the Continental Divide there. So Arapaho Basin makes sense that it's got the highest skiable terrain. It's, it's truly very close to the Continental Divide, as you can see from our measurement. Let's dig a little deeper. The uh, Ski areas in Colorado are close to the Continental Divide, by and large, as we saw. How far are these ski areas from the Continental Divide? Um, let's say we had a hypothesis. How many ski areas are within, or partly within, 50 miles, let's say, of the Continental Divide? How do we figure out how many ski areas are within 50 miles of the Continental Divide? As you already know from the measure tool, we could be measuring every single one of these. Right? For example, we could measure Vail, and it looks like it's about 16 miles from the Continental Divide. Same thing with Breckenridge here, about 6 miles from the Continental Divide. But we don't need to do that for all 22 ski areas. And imagine if you had a 1,000 of something. You don't want to be measuring every single one of those. There's a faster way to do that, and that is with a buffer tool. Now, one of the tools that we have on our toolbox here is called the Arc Toolbox. It looks like a little red toolbox. And so we're going to click on that. And it'll pop up right here in the middle of our screen here in a moment. Now, one of the tools inside Arc Toolbox, we've got a lot of different tools to choose from. We're going to keep things simple, though. Under Analysis Tools is something called Proximity. Under Proximity is a tool called Buffer. What this will do is buffer whatever you want it to buffer. It'll draw a buffer zone around features. So in this case, we want to buffer the Continental Divide, don't we? So let's go ahead and double click on Buffer. Pops up a little buffer tool. And don't be, don't be stymied or thwarted or scared by this, by this uh, set of choices. Uh, it's going to be fairly simple. Input features in this first white box. Go ahead and arrow down our input. What do we want to buffer? We want to buffer our continental divide. So I'm going to pick the continental divide okay, from that uh, list of choices. Our output feature class, what do we want to call it when we're done? Well, it's going to go into my same folder, which is what I want. I want it to go in my Colorado Ski Areas folder. And I'm going to call it Colorado uh, Ski Areas Continental Divide Maybe we'll call it 50 mile buffer. 
something like that. That way I'll know when I'm done that I've got a 50 mile buffer. Our linear unit, what do we, what's the distance we want? Well, I'm going to type in 50 and not meters. <laughs> I'm going to go with 50 miles, right? So let's review. My input features of my continental divide. My output feature is going to be continental divide 50 mile buffer and this dot shp means a shapefile. A shapefile is to ArcGIS as a doc file is to Word, as an Excel XLS file is to Excel and so on. It's the one of the native format files that will work with your GIS. Now if I hadn't called it dot shape um, it would default to that but I'm going to call it dot shape so I'm sure that it's it's going to be there and uh, my unit is 50 miles. Great! All right. So I'm going to hit say OK, and then what do I get? I'm going to go ahead and hit the uh, globe to go to the full extent. Now what I have here is my 50 mile buffer around my continental divide. You can see that it's that it's uh, it looks kind of like a uh, sort of like a snake, sort of an oblong uh, feature. I'm going to zoom in on it a little bit, and as, as you can see here, I've got 50 mile buffer around the ski area. Okay, so let's go ahead and test something. Ask the students, is this 50 miles on each side or is it 50 miles uh, across the whole buffer? Let's go ahead and measure. One of the things about looking at things spatially is that you can always test at every step of the way. We don't want the students to just click, 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 zoom in, zoom out, and turn in my paper and I haven't learned anything. We really want them to investigate, to be good consumers of data, to be critical of the data that they're using. We'll have more to say about the data in a bit. Let's go ahead and measure from one end of the buffer, one side of the buffer to the uh, continental divide. I can see that's 50 miles. Then if I stop and go over to here, uh, I can see that my total length is about 100 miles. So it's 50 miles on both sides of the buffer is what we're getting at. So what have we done in that segment? We figured out what the buffer what the 50 mile buffer is, but that's only the first half of the equation, right? Our goal was to find out how many ski areas are within this 50 mile buffer, within 50 miles of the continental divide. We can go ahead and get rid of the ARC toolbox for the moment so we can see more map here on our, our screen. Okay, I'm going to turn the ski areas back on and raise them up. Any one of these layers you can raise and put a, uh, above uh, other layers. And well, the way these layers draw is from bottom to top. So if I drag the ski areas layer up, it's going to be on top now of my continental divide 50 mile buffer. Does that make sense? So whatever's on the top draws last, whatever's on the bottom draws first. Okay, so continuing our investigation then, how many of the Colorado ski areas are within or partly within this 50 mile buffer? That is going to be in the next, in the next segment. We've done the first part of the equation, and then in the next segment, we'll figure out how many of the Colorado ski areas are within this buffer.